Welcome to today's more report on Thursday the 8th of September with me, Rich Pro Market Analyst at Hantech Markets. It is ECB Day and the markets are just mildly sort of consolidating to a sort of possible um, slight risk on element. Um, more driven generally by the dollar weakness that we've seen overnight. We had the Fed um, beige book out last night and the Fed beige book talked about the fact that um, wage growth in the states was moderate and it's sort of not really pushing forward is it wages so that's really sort of not heaping too much pressure on the Fed to um, hike interest rates and subsequently we've seen the dollar just sort of drifting back lower again and that's sort of filtering through on across the forex majors today very slight gains on these markets again sort of the um, less pressure on the Fed um, to hike interest rates sort of maintained a, a, a mildly positive outlook on these equity markets. So we've seen that sort of coming through the European session today. And also we've had out overnight the Chinese trade data. Chinese trade um, on both imports and exports came in ahead of expectations and a really um, quite impressive uh, number on the... Um, let me show you actually. A number on the China um, imports was at 1.5%, which ultimately this comes up properly no don't ruin me come on um, China's imports actually rose for the first time since October 2014 so that was a, a real surprise and um, that has generated a, a nice element of, um, of bullishness back into the market today um, although I think the markets are consolidating slightly with the ECB in mind because the ECB is going to be announcing monetary policy at 12.45 today um, no change expected on rates however um, there could be uh, an extension of the quantitative easing program which is due to end in March 2017 and I suppose if you're going to talk about that, then you'd also talk about the possibility of increasing the monthly purchases as well. But the expectation is that um, the the rates will not change, but uh, possibility of extending the program limit, maybe six months, say, to again to September 2017. Um, but also there could be other um, factors such as sort of changing the capital key rules, um, which um, sort of uh, are designed to um, sort of determine exactly how much how much uh, bonds are purchased per country um, and that is sort of limiting the uh, availability of bonds because it's sort of skewed towards Germany at the moment so possible changes there but unlikely I think uh, in this meeting but still it'll be very interesting to see what happens now into the ECB meeting um, the uh, the euro is, is sort of mildly positive but again I'll show you on euro dollar in a bit but uh, certainly the um, markets are um, still reacting I think to this um, slightly weaker dollar today um, you've got the treasury yields which again have not really been able to pick up in the last couple of days since um, that really disappointing ISM non-manufacturing PMI and uh, the two-year and the ten-year treasury yields both uh, lower now the oil price again picking up that's being helped by the um, by the China trade data 1.8% on uh, on crude up today so that's a, a positive certainly um, but uh, I think the dollar and um, ECB are the main sort of drivers. So um, we've got uh, weekly jobless claims at 130 and the uh, EIA crude oil inventories this afternoon as well. Um, uh, jobless claims 265 as per normal, seems to be as per normal. Um, doesn't really change in, in the last, hasn't really changed in the last few weeks. And the EIA oil inventories, which is meant to be coming in about plus 0.4%, that does tend to generate a, a an element of volatility uh, on the uh, oil inventories so uh, watch out for that later but that takes me to my chart today which is the kiwi dollar and we've had a really strong breakout on kiwi dollar this is kiwi dollar um over the past sort of year or so big uptrend channel breaking higher through that uptrend channel and um the upside breakout actually if i zoom back out takes you to the highest since sort of q2 2015 and now that sort of breakout opens up what I see as a, a resistance band between sort of 76 area, um, 76 big figure I suppose you'd call it, and uh, 77 sort of 45 which was the peaks of 2015. So that breakout is interesting but is it going to continue? So what I'm going to show you now is the Bollinger Bands, or are the Bollinger Bands I should say. Bollinger Bands 
we've broken out, but we're sort of trading entirely outside the Bollinger Bands again. And that sort of suggests it's a bit of an extreme move near term. Yes, it's sort of arguably a bit of a breakout move, but I think that would suggest that it still is a little bit extreme, this move. So you could well see a bit of a dip back into those Bollinger Bands. And that would unwind uh, a slight bit of overbought aspect to this chart as well. You'd look at this th this chart on the daily and say the breakout above 73 figure area couldn't quite be sustained um, on several occasions through July and August. But now we are seeing this breakout sustained. And uh, I think 73 figure up towards sort of 73, sort of, well, 40 area uh, with the sort of uh, several of the intraday highs, but 73.80 was this reaction higher here that we saw with that big bearish engulfing pattern. So you'd say between sort of 73 figure and 73.80, there's a, a nice band of support now with this. You've also got this uptrend over the past um, few months as well, and uh, the RSI is interestingly above 70 again. Now, as a, I'll say, a, um, sort of. It, does seem to be a little bit limiting of the upside potential. Again, zooming back here, doesn't tend to get too sort of high, does it, this RSI? 73 area at the moment. And again, that seems to be sort of quite often where the, the profit taking comes in after these strong runs higher. So just keep that in mind. You might well see a bit of upside potential limited in the coming days, as, as, as I said, with those Bollinger Bands and also the RSI looking a little bit stretched at the moment. But I think Little corrections are certainly going to be seen as a chance to buy. As I said, you've got that nice band of support between 73 figure and 70, 73.80. Uh, this is the hourly chart where at the moment this is that uh, sort of breakout, 73.45 uh, intraday highs tended to come in. 74.40 is initially supportive today, which was a reaction low yesterday. If you sort of went below that, that would complete a minor little top pattern. Again, that would be sort of 40 ticks of downside, 45 ticks of downside, back towards sort of 74 figure area, back towards that sort of 73.80 sort of breakout level. So it would help to unwind these overbought momentum indicators. Um, though they are looking pretty strong, they are sort of a little bit stretched near term. You'd say sort of 40 to 50 seems to be a pretty decent sort of buying area now in this run higher. On the uh, on the hourly RSI in the past sort of week or so, so I think there is room for a little bit of a near-term unwind still uh, on this um, on this Kiwi, and uh, I think there is a, a chance to buy at lower levels, but still looking pretty strong, and um, I'm pretty confident about this one now. So I wish you good luck in your trading today, and I'll speak to you later. Thank you.